Hello everybody. Um, so we're now starting to talk about the other type or the second type of integration, which is the numerical integration. And actually we have different uh, types of the numerical integration and uh, we will start with the simplest one, which is the integration of tabulated data. Um, so the integration of tabulated data is like what we see here. You have the integration uh, output, which is i, should be the integration of function of y dx. And y is the function of x actually. Uh, this can be function of x and y, it doesn't matter. Um, so the general form should be f of x and y. Um, and in, in, in a case like this, you would have table that has the values that has been got experimentally or whatever uh, for x and y. Uh, and you don't have any other input that you can use to get the value of the integration. And you need to, to use these data to do the integration. And um, simply, the integration is going to be the... Um, if, if you plot the function of y, which is, let's say, it is y dx, um, then it's going to be uh, when you plot the y or the function versus the x, which is the independent variable, um, you can get something like this. It doesn't matter what the, the, the curve would look like, but the uh, output of the integration or the value of the integration would be equal to the area under the curve. So if you are able to calculate the area under the curve, then you will be able to know exactly what is the value of the integration. So um, there are different methods that people use to do the integration and to calculate the area under the curve. The One of the simplest and the most widely used ones is what we call the trapezoidal rule. And it's called the trapezoidal rule because it, it, uh, it depends on the trapezium uh, area calculation. So what we say is that we will split this uh, area, the big area, into trapeziums we will assume that these are trapeziums. So I'll assume that this is a trapezium, this is a trapezium, and this is a trapezium. And the total area would be the sum of the areas of each of one of these trapeziums. Um, uh, the area of, the of a trapezium is known to be the middle base by height. So um, I, I have these two parallel uh, sides, then I will get the middle base, which is the average of these two. So it's going to be this plus this divided by two, which is 5.2 plus 7.7 .7 divided by 2 multiplied by the height which is this distance which is the difference in x you will do this for the first one which is this and add the area of the second one and add the area of the third one and this is all what you need to do to get the calculation of course it's it's simple here but if you have a, a big table with a lot of data then it's gonna be uh, not very easy to uh, to do so uh, what we're gonna see now is to see how we can do this in MATLAB uh, the the function that does the trapezoidal integration is called traps T R A P Z um, and what you need to do it's uh, if, if you just press help traps it's gonna be simple function actually you don't need to put a lot of inputs uh, just you want to define the X and Y and it says trapezoidal numerical integration um, and the input that we usually use is this which is traps of X and Y um, he says here it is the integral of y uh, with respect to x using the trapezoidal method. x and y must have must be vectors with the same length, so it so cannot put matri matrices. They have to be a column or a row, and uh, x must be a column vector and y uh, with first no, whatever. So so this is just saying everything that we said. So what we need to define is the x, y, and y, and just put the uh, traps uh, function. So let's define the, um, I put them side by side so I can define x and y. So x is equals to 1, 2.5, 7, 10. y equals 5.2, 7.7, 9.6, 13.2. And what we need to do is just to uh, type traps. And it, it, you have to make sure that you write it. Uh, in the right order because it depends on which will be the middle base and which would be the height so if you flip them then it's gonna calculate it the other way so this is not what we need to do um, and here it is so you, you have the answer which is 82.8 which is exactly what you get when you calculate um, the uh, output of this this equation so it's, it's kind of a piece of cake. You don't need to do anything. Just define x and y and use the traps function, and that's all. 
Um, I, I'm interested in getting you uh, interested in this kind of, uh, of, uh, of function because we have some applications in chemical engineering. Um, so uh, I think it's kind of very famous example, but let's uh, just talk quickly about this. So it's what we call the period tube. The period tube is a um, uh, tool that we use to calculate the velocity um, in tubes or pipes. And this is uh, simply you have uh, a tube here and this tube is connected to a pressure measuring device like a YouTube manometer or whatever. And this, uh, by using the Bernoulli equation, you can um, measure uh, or, or using the, the difference in pressure that you get here, you can calculate the velocity of the stream uh, here. Um, Peter tube is uh, it's famous for calculating the local velocity. So most of the velocity measuring devices measures the uh, the average velocity, but you know that there is what we call the, the velocity profile because you have here, according to the no slip boundary condition, the velocity here is zero at the at the border or at, at the walls of the pipe, and in the middle or in the center of the pipe you have the maximum velocity. So you have the velocity profile here. So if you move the period tube here, you get calculate the maximum velocity. If you move it to the bottom, you would calculate an, uh, a, a lower velocity, and that's why you, you can calculate the local velocity using this uh, this tool um, so I'm not going to go through all this but this is how we calculate the velocity and this is according to uh, uh, the location so this V is uh, is different from the V at, at another um, another radius so what we can get is that um, uh, if, if you want to get the flow rate you can calculate the flow rate from the integration of velocity um, by dA. So, so in, in general, Q is A multiplied by V, but here the A, uh, the, the velocity is not constant, it's a function of radius. So, uh, to, to, to get the, the total flow rate, you, you must do integration, and the integration is done by, uh, by this way, it's V dA, and then the dA is the, uh, um, uh, it's an increment of the cross-sectional area, which is 2 pi r dr, so you have 2 pi as a constant coming out of the integration, and you'll end up with r multiplied by v dr, which is, this is the function of r. So, so v is the, the dependent variable, and r is the independent variable. So the function is r multiplied by v, multiplied by, or, or uh, and then um, integration with respect to r. Um, so to do the graphical integration, this is what we need to do. Just put r here in the x-axis and plot r vr and get the area. And of course, it's going to be something like this uh, because you start with zero velocity and then we'll end up with uh, larger. I, I mean, uh, I mean, we start with zero radius and then we'll end up with zero velocity. So here and here would be zero. Um, so uh, I have some tabulated data here. Um, I don't know where we have them. Okay, so this is uh, so I actually did the calculations on Excel to compare, but um, I don't want to show them now. So this is what the data we have. So I have the um, R in centimeters and the V. Uh, in meter per second, and I want to use the trapezoidal function to uh, do the integration. So I'll, uh, oops, I clear everything. So I'm starting from scratch. I will define r, which is, so it's from zero to five with the increment of one. So I can define it like this, um, and then I can define the velocity. As a matrix, I have to define it by, by myself because these are uh, just uh, numbers. So it's going to be 6.4, 6.1. 5.2, 4.4, 2, and 0. Um, so now I have these two, uh, both are 1 by 6, so both have the same um, uh, length. Uh, one important thing is to make sure that the units are homogeneous because the integration of R, uh, let's go back here, um, the R multiplied by VDR, you have to make sure that they all have uniform units of meter for the uh, distance. Um, so the radius, the radius that we have here is in centimeters, so I have to put R equal R divided by 100, uh, so I now have it in, 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 in meters now, okay? Um, and to do the integration, you just need to use the traps function um, and define x and y. So x is the independent variable, which is the r, and the y should be the function of r multiplied by v. So it's going to be, uh, oops, um, 
are uh, drops I'm sorry I did a mistake R and then R multiplied by V okay um, so this is what we should get but of course we'll get an error here because uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not doing matrix multiplication I am doing element wise multiplication so I have to put the dot here and it gave me the output of 0 0.0038 which is I got 0 0.00377 um, this this is not the Q. The Q is gonna be um, the two multiplied by pi multiplied by this, which is gonna be 0 0.0237, which is 0 0.0236888. Um, so it's it's giving exactly the same number uh, that I was expecting to see when I did the calculations manually. And and here what I did is just simply. I uh, calculated the area of a trapezium, the middle base, multiplied by height for each one of them, and I got the sum of them here, and then I got the um, multiply this by 2 pi. So uh, this is one very nice application that you can uh, feel why the trapezoidal uh, rule might be uh, useful and important for us in our applications in chemical engineering. So that's all for today, and I'll see you in the next video. Inshallah. Goodbye.